singing in our church uh, every week. But take your Bibles and turn with me, if you will, to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. We'll begin reading in verse 1. Titus chapter 2. And verse 1. When you find that passage, please stand with me in reference to the Word of God. Titus chapter 2, beginning verse 1. The Bible says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become the holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. They may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not forlorning, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let us pray. Father God, we're thankful for this word that you've read this evening, for the instruction that you've given to the Christian tonight in our behavior and in, our, uh, in, our, in the way that we live our lives. Father, we ask your blessings on this evening's service. Father, we're thankful for each and every one that's here tonight. Father, we pray that it. Everyone might receive a blessing. We ask your blessings on Pastor Crane this evening as he preaches the word. And Father, we're thankful for those that were added to our number today in the morning service. Father, please fill our cups once again by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord will be faithful and give you all praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I know what you 
Hey, can you remember where you was at and what you was doing? Uh, what occupation, what thought uh, life you had back then? Just a little volume right here, Doc. Uh, I remember where I found, when the Lord found me. I was way down in sin's dark valley, Brother Gaines, way down there. And the Lord reached down his hand for me. And thank God for the good grace of God we heard about this morning. And so we learned about God's grace tonight. I found three times in the text the word doctrine. And not too long ago we learned from Timothy, I believe there was three times in a chapter uh, where the word doctrine was used. I believe today that God wants to indoctrinate us. He wants more than just an orientation of his teachings. He wants us to be rooted. He wants us to be grounded in the truth. He wants us to know the truth. The truth is the word of God. But we've got to do more than just read it. We have to search the scriptures, John 9, 39. Jesus said, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study, study. Christian, are you studying the Bible? I'm talking about more than just reading it. Are you searching it? Are you studying the Bible? Study to show yourself the proof. Only time in the New Testament is a direct command to study the Bible. A lot of the new versions have taken the word study out. Be careful. Be careful. A direct command of God, study. Study to show yourself a proven to God, workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is truth. It is truth incarnate. It is the living word of God. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was the living word. We have the written word. Forever, O Lord, Psalm 119, verse number 89. Forever, O Lord. Is thy word settled in heaven? It's not moving. And guess what? If you search it, if you study it, you're not going to be moving. You're not going to be all over the place. You're not going to be riding a roller coaster. Your life's going to look more like a stable existence. You'll have peace like a river. I'm not saying you're not going to have problems come your way, but in the midst of the storm, you'll be able to look at that storm, and you're going to just be able to say this, Lord, rebuke it. Because I'm, I'm moving in that direction. <laughs> How many had some limbs to pick up? How many had some trees to uh, saw up? And we're still picking up around the place. But thank God we're still, we still, and thank God we still got a roof over our head. And thank God in November we're still having hurricanes. There's one still, <laughs> I better not laugh. There's one still out there. How many's praying? How many's praying? Amen. And so, uh, uh, Brother Bob, every time, the summer rolls around. He'll say, now, preacher, go to praying now. Go to praying now. And I heard, uh, I went up to see Johnny and preached for him. And uh, Brother Gates said, uh, preacher, you weren't here. We got, <laughs> we got hit by a storm. He said, no, you can't leave anymore. You just can't do it no more. And it's not about me. It's about the Lord. Amen. I have no power but his power. Amen. And, and then there's a verse we was quoting coming to church tonight. The Lord does not give us a spirit of fear. Think on it now. But of love, but of power and of love and of what? Sound mind. Sound mind. So the word of God will indoctrinate you, yes. Why does it indoctrinate you? Why does it get you on solid ground? So that you can keep the soundness of your mind. This old crazy world will drive you crazy. They'll think you're crazy. They'll think you're wacky. Friend, I'm solid. I'm standing on the solid rock tonight. Praise God. I think I'll shout. I think I'll just go ahead and run the aisles tonight. Is that all right? Hey, I want to speak tonight on what the Bible says about adorning the doctrine of God. Adorning. What is it talking about? We're to adorn the doctrine of God as a lady would, as she's dressing to go to a very important uh, function like church, like she's going to a special uh, uh, presentation of something. She's making herself beautiful. She's becoming her husband. She's uh, making herself attractive. 
And that's what the word adorn here means. It means that we should beautify the doctrine. A church that says that we should not preach doctrine is not a church of the Lord Jesus because Jesus said in his word that we're to make beautiful the doctrine of our God. What is it? It's the teachings of the word of God. We're to indoctrinate ourselves constantly. We're to study this scripture so that Though the storms come our way, they will not be able to push us over. Amen. They will not be able to overcome us. Uh, greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. We should not allow the gates of hell to come and to uh, defeat us. No, we should be pushing against the gates uh, of hell. I sense the evil in the world. I sense the spirit of Antichrist in the world today. That's why we should be sober. That's why we should be discreet and temperate and sound in faith and holy. Amen. A holy person. Not false accusers, the scripture says here tonight, whose lives, these people who give a false statement. No, we're to give a good statement. We're to give the good news of, of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and we need to be teachers of good. Oh yes, we're to be teachers of good with our mouth. Uh, and we're to teach the great lessons uh, with our life lessons. Amen. With our great example that we're living our life. Uh, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, body and soul. Uh, and ladies, uh, we're to love uh, we're to love our husbands, uh, the scripture says, uh, and their children. Ladies, uh, be keepers of home and, and to be discreet, the scripture says. And men, we're to love our wives and, and their children. We're not just to love our, our, our children with word, but in deed and in truth. Uh, and our wives, of course. And, and otherwise, it says here that God would be blasphemed. What does that mean? That means that our children, our family could be cursed because we go to church on Sunday but we come home and we say things that we should not do in front of the children and they're getting, uh, you know, they're, they're getting two different feeds. They're, they're getting two different sources. They're, they're smiling going to church but when we come home, it's a different story. There's altogether a different story. And we're saying things we shouldn't say. We're doing things we shouldn't do. And we have hatred one toward another. And God said for the husbands to love your wives. And God said for the wives to love your husbands and your children. This is very basic. It doesn't sound like deep doctrinal subject here tonight. But can you find a family in this town that have a strong family? where everybody's intact, uh, where everybody loves each other, where everybody goes to church, uh, where everybody's raising children, where everybody loves God and loves each other. They're hard to find, friend. Why do we need sound doctrine? Why do we need doctrine that our families will be sound in the faith, uh, our families will be strong uh, with love one towards another? Now can we adorn the doctrine? <laughs> You think we can? You think we can enhance it? You think we can make it more beautiful? You, you think that we can, uh, if you will, become the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? I think we better. <laughs> oh, we're having a cursed generation because we have children who've never darkened the doors of churches. We've got children that never have been told or shown uh, the will of God for their lives. They wouldn't know the will of God if they met it in the middle of the road. They wouldn't know a true church uh, if they met it in the middle of the road. Why are we growing up in such a wicked and a perverse nation? Why are we growing up today? Our children are and having to be tempted at every point, at every turn. I'll tell you why. The church uh, is not being the church. Uh, the church uh, is not indoctrinating the young people. The church is letting the young people go their own way and do their own thing. We need to be teachers. I said, you faithful people in here, every one of you need to be a teacher in this church. Every one of you. You've been in church 20 years plus, every one of you. You need to sign up for a class. Our educational director was going around the church this morning. He was trying to recruit teachers. You, 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 you. 
you know, he shouldn't have to come looking for you. You ought to go looking for Brother Waldrop. We've got some classes to fill. What's going to happen if the church quits being the church? What's going to happen if the church loses its power? I'm saying its salt has lost its savor. It's good for nothing. Cast under the foot of men. I don't want to be a good for nothing Christian. I don't want my children or my grandchildren to grow up to be a good for nothing Christian. No, no preserving agency. Oh, no uh, sting to the taste. Friend, listen, my friend. Uh, oh, listen, the reason the world hates us uh, is because uh, there's a deep wound uh, and sin has left its mark uh, in the individual. We come along with the word of God and it stings them to their very core. It should. Just our presence. Uh, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. We don't have to say a thing. It should sting them. Why? Because they should feel under conviction because of the knowledge of the scriptures that they know we have. And the lifestyle that we live and the love that we have for one another. Do you love your family tonight? I say we should. We should love our family. And if we love God, we will love our family. If we love our God, we will love our wives and our, our, our husbands. Amen. Hey, if we love our God, we will love each other too, as the old song says, amen. Makes you love everybody, doesn't it? Look at verse 10 again. Not purloining, not sh uh, but showing all good fidelity. I want to say first of all, before we can adorn the doctrine of God, it's more than just saying we believe the Bible. It's more than just saying we've memorized so many scriptures of the Bible. It's more than just putting on an open display, hey, I've got a doctorate degree. <laughs> Biblical studies. <laughs> it ain't worth two toots. If you're not living it. Amen. And so what God's word says tonight. To showing all good fidelity. Fidelity. First of all tonight to adorn the doctrine of God. We've got to live it. Which means fidelity is needed on our part. Not infidelity. Okay, you got it? Not infidelity. Not living uh, in the world. It, it says to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Amen. And looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're looking for Jesus, if you're on tiptoe anticipation and expectation of the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, guess what? You're going to be a holy Christian. He said in his word there in 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 3, He that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. What hope are you talking about, preacher? The hope of eternal life. The hope of the resurrection. Everybody's staring at me like a calf looking at a new gate. I love the Lord tonight. If I were to ask you to stand tonight and just say one sentence, I love the Lord tonight, preacher, because what would you say? What would you say? I say fidelity is needed on our this means, this word fidelity means commitment. That's something you don't hear much about anymore. Consistency, dedication, devotedness, devotion, faith, faithfulness, fastness. Uh, listen, fidelity, here's the word, loyalty, piety, steadfastness, amen. Oh, think about it now. This is not just for a little while then, is it? This is decade after decade. You know, your Christian life could best be judged and gauged not by year to year, but from decade to decade. How are we doing, Christian? We have a lot of people coming in and going out. I want to tag them when they're passing through so we can find them, put a GPS on them. It's about that hard to find them after they get with us. Amen. <laughs> but listen, this is not sometimes on and sometimes all. This is not faithful for a month and unfaithful for a year. This is not being discreet for one week and a tail bear the next week. This is not being dedicated to read the Bible one week and then off to, to, to the next book the next week. You understand what I'm saying? This is loyalty to Christ. This is where we prolong, this is where we, uh, if you will, the word adorn the doctrine of our God. Why, we love our God. 
We, we want to learn every word that he speaks. Uh, man shall not live by bread alone. We read, uh, quoted this morning, but by every word. We have an every word Bible and we need to know every word. We need to learn it. We need to stay steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And I love the next verse. But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, how are you going to get the victory if you never open this book and put your nose in this book? How are you going to get the victory over sin, Satan, self? You're not going to do it. Listen, faith is the victory. How do we get faith? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You need to be devoted and committed. You need to be dedicated. That's what it's saying. Oh, not just for a little while. Not just a, a little while going to Sunday school and then fall out some way. Amen. Not going to church uh, uh, at one point in life and, and then something happened like the pandemic. Uh, you know, and just forever get out of church. And how long is it going to last? Two years, uh, three years, uh, five years. How long can we use this as an excuse uh, not to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, uh, with all of our mind, and with all of our soul? We need God's word in our heart. We need God's word in our heart. We've got to, folks. Uh, I believe this. I believe the Bible teaches us that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God helpeth uh, our infirmities. Is that not what your Bible says in Romans 8? I'm just going to stick with the Bible. I'm just going to say that my Bible is more powerful than Dr. Kildare. I'm just going to say that my Bible is more powerful than Dr. Welby, MD. I always liked that show. That was back when you could really watch a clean show. But I'm going to say something to you. Dr. Welby hadn't got nothing on Jesus Christ. You know why? Because Jesus Christ, y'all forgive me tonight, I'm getting excited. Jesus Christ is the great physician. Amen? Oh, yes, he helpeth our infirmities. Uh, he healeth our infirmities. Second, uh, I'm trying to hurry. Y'all forgive me. I'm beside myself. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me up here. Somebody shout. Uh, listen, then it says we can adorn the doctrine after we show all fidelity. Are you showing all fidelity? Are you making... The gospel attractive. Not just at church. When you go home in front of your kids, do you still talk attractive and beautify and enhance the gospel? Or are you doing this? Ooh, preacher, two, he went two minutes over this morning. Ooh, don't he know? Don't he know? Don't he know? I know. Amen. You're a whack. Needle and every little thing. Don't you worry about it. Turn it over to Jesus. If you don't like what you hear, turn it over to him. Amen. Turn it over to him. He's my boss. You ain't my boss. He's my boss. Somebody help me up here. I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling lonely. I might be riding that, that car on the, on the way out of, uh, the train on the way out of town tonight too. Secondly, then we can adorn the doctrine if it says we have good all good fidelity, it says, that they may adorn. In other words, they're connected. We have that commitment that we need. Amen? We have that dedication that we need. Then it says we can adorn the doctrine. We can make beautiful the doctrine. It's not all blow and no go. It's not all talk and no walk. Friend, it's going to take some shoe leather on your part. It's going to take some time in the Word of God. I promise you, it's not that we do not want to learn the scriptures, but our flesh, the arm of the flesh fails us. We have to put our flesh in submission. We have to yield our flesh every day to the Spirit of God. It all goes back to that, doesn't it? Oh, listen, my friend, the doctrine. Listen, if you have the doctrine, the stability, the character that we need, that God's Word brings, this can help your testimony. This can be a blessing to your, uh, to your life and to your family's life. Uh, if we want to become the doctrine of God, uh, we have to live the doctrine of God. We've got to adorn it. We've got to be clothed in it every day. Walking down the street, they ought to say, there goes a Christian. I think those people go to Temple Baptist. That's the crazy preacher down there that shouts, and wild. he's wild half the time. It's all right. Amen. Tell it to Jesus. Amen. So listen, 
Uh, we, we can finish our Bible degree here and, and still uh, and go to church uh, and uh, be the uh, best Christian that we possibly can, but yet we're still not adorning. We're still not making beautiful. You know, the Pharisees tried to make beautiful the outward appearance of these pillars outside these seven pillars out here. They had them at the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus knew what was in those pillars. He said on the inside, he said on the outside, you're as white and sepulchers, but on the inside, you're as dead men's bones. They had killed the prophets and put their bones over in the middle hollow part of those pillars. They hated preachers. We're to love prophesying. We're to preach the word. We're to be instant in season and out of season. I had Brother Chris ready to preach uh, while I was away on Wednesday night, and uh, the storm came. He couldn't preach it. I said, just keep it ready. Keep that sword sharpened. You never know. Preacher may not have the spirit one night, and I'll say, Chris, I'm yielding to you. Get that verse out. Get that Bible out. Then the night, Brother uh, Donald came up to me, and he was carrying a little New Testament, bless his heart, and he had some papers in that Bible. And uh, he said, I found this Bible. I said, Preacher, is this your Bible? It's a little New Testament, a little soul winning Bible. I said, no, that's not mine. I looked in front of him, and it said this. David Sawyer. I said, David's over in the glory land. <laughs> I said, David would not mind you carrying his Bible and using his Bible. <laughs> Let me tell you about David Sawyer. David Sawyer adorned the doctrine of our God. He is the epitome of what I'm preaching tonight. He fell in love with Jesus for four years of his life, five years maybe he was in this church after he got saved. He grew faster than anybody I've ever seen in my life. I made him an adult Sunday school teacher and son. In the first year, he was eating it up like candy. He was eating it up, I'm telling you, like cotton candy, a kid at a fair. He was loving it. His wife said to me, Sister Mila, bless her heart, how many prays for Sister Mila? I've never met such a spunky lady, bless her heart. My wife, if she needed something done, if she needed the ladies to go to here or do this with her or do that with her, she'd just have Sister Mila going around with, with, with a clipboard, and she'd say, you're going, get on the van. Give me your money. We're raising money for something. Give me your money. She didn't take no for it. <laughs> but I, I know that, uh, that God gives us special people like this. It, it, it's one thing to read the Bible and to see how it's supposed to work, but it's better to see it, it working in the lives and the hearts of people that are reading the Bible. Does that make any sense? And, and Brother David, he was just a student of the Word of God. And, and Sister Mila said she'd come in, and, and, and David would be just getting home from work, but he'd read. He'd be reading his Bible. He'd eat his supper, and then he'd go to his bedroom, and then he'd be reading his Bible over and over and over and over, and he was just studying. He was just searching. He was looking. What was he looking for, Pastor? We're to search for it as one does silver and one does gold. Is that not what your Bible says? Oh, listen, my friend, tonight, uh, it's a sweet-smelling savor unto our God. Listen, I don't want to be a bad-smelling vapor, do you, in the nostrils of my God. Oh, no, my friend, I want God to be proud of us. Uh, I want God to thank uh, us one day and reward us for all the time and all the energy and all the, 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 the learning, the time that we had to learn His precious Word. Third thing, lastly, Amen. Who said, <laughs> we are to man, <laughs> it's a standing joke around here. I'm taking a breath. <laughs> We're to make beautiful the Lord and his church. By the way, he's ahead of it. By the way, he's coming for it one day. Where's bride? He's the bridegroom, am I right? Notice it says that they may adorn the doctrine of God and notice this, our Savior in all things. Now, we say the church because it says in all things. That, and you can't separate Jesus and his church. You cannot separate a man and his wife. They're one. I told Brother, uh, brother uh, David up here in the choir hall ago uh, about uh, uh, brother, uh, uh, brother Garlot. Wasn't that terrible about him losing his wife? We got a little card going around tonight. I hope everybody will sign it. Uh, he, he's grieving. 
Brother David told me, he said, you know, he said, he'll be grieving for a long time. He said, because I lost my wife. Am I right, Brother David? And he said, you know, he, he said, half of you is gone because you're one when you're a husband and wife. And, and, and when one dies and goes to heaven, you're just half of who you were. That kind of helps in perspective of how Brother Garlot's feeling right now. We really need to pray. He got up here this morning all choked up. But he had the opportunity, Brother Gary said, and the deacon said to me, he said he had the opportunity to thank the church for all the prayers. Miss Crane, is it all right, Sister Kathy, our food lady's gone. Is it okay if we just get a pounding, some food up? We always do it when there's a funeral. I think it was just a private service. But is there any way we could just fix things up for Lamar and Lamar Jr. and Elizabeth and, and just feed them? And just, I don't know any other way. In the South, that's the only way we know to tell somebody we love them is to feed them. Miss Crane loves me a lot. <laughs> she has cooked and cooked and cooked. She's killing me one spoon at a time. So we're, we're, we're to make beautiful the Lord and His church. We're to adorn the doctrine of the church as a lady sits for maybe an hour putting on her makeup curling her hair, making herself attractive to her husband. Am I right about this? I'm talking about in modest uh, apparel. I'm talking about doing it with uh, sobriety and doing it uh, uh, as unto the Lord, of course. And, and, but, but is this not the same word that we're to adorn the teachings of God and His church? We're to a beautify. We're to think good of it. We're never to speak ill uh, of our church. We're never to speak ill uh, of, of God's work here in this world. Why? It's a beautiful thing. How beautiful are the feet of them who preach the gospel of peace. Oh, I thank God for that preacher the night I got saved. That big, tall, six-foot-four preacher, Brother Rick Adams. I never will forget him. He's 92 years old. I still send him a little gift every year. Amen. On the anniversary. I sure do. I love him. And I thank God for the church. I got saved at church. I got saved uh, uh, from the preaching in the church of the Lord Jesus. I, I'm just humble to think that I have a little part in the work of our God. Oh, listen, if we get to the end of life's way, we have just a little part uh, in the work of our God. It will be worth it. Oh, let me speak practically uh, for just a few minutes in closing tonight. Uh, you know, we... Uh, if it's a beautiful thing, and it is, it sure is. The church is a beautiful thing. To hear and to see those little feet running up and down uh, the quarters of our church every Sunday, to me, it's worth it all just to come watch that. Oh, to hear the prayer requests in the Sunday school classes. Oh, please put them up on the board. We need prayer for this one or for that one. Oh, to see uh, last uh, Wednesday night, Brother Walter Bastos should come to the altar and pray for our country. Everybody in the church emptied out and came down here and prayed. I believe God heard, heard every prayer. I know he did. Hey, if we're to earnestly uh, make beautiful uh, our, our, our doctrine uh, of not only the word but also the, the doctrine of the church, listen, we, we should make something beautiful out of it. Everything must be done right and in order. Everything must be done uh, all the details must be done. And, and can I speak to you if you're a teacher, if you're a worker, if you're a bus captain? Can I, t can I speak to you uh, if you have any part here at the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Listen, adorn it. Make it beautiful. Shine the windows. We've got a hurricane that came through here and it's messed up every window up front. We've been so busy trying to just put everything back to place. We had not had time to get the... Windex, is that what they call it? Make it beautiful. Put some foo-foo powder in here. Y'all know what foo-foo powder is? I think you plug it in the, in, in the switch now. But, but I, call it, I still call it foo-foo power. Amen. I, I, I'm saying uh, 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 it, it, make it beautiful. Uh, make it uh, uh, how Jesus would want it to be. Uh, if, if, we want, if we need more choir singers, boy, isn't that beautiful tonight? They're practicing that beautiful special for Christmas. I just can't wait. The beautiful parts and the harmony and all of that, I just can't wait. To, uh, if, if Jesus was here, would we make more of his church to, with him here than when he's not here? He said, where's his body? 
He said, we're in charge. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose. In other words, he's put us in authority. He said, all power and authority I give unto you, church. Shouldn't we beautify it? Hey, at Christmas, why don't, it, December's coming, and it's the busiest month of the year. You only get in, you only get out of something what you put into something. Come to all the functions. Go to the hot chocolate drinkings. Uh, come to the caroling. Uh, uh, come, uh, come to the uh, to the pie eating contest. I, I'll I'll sign up for that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, uh, 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 God wants to make His house beautiful. Hey, you know the best way I think to make His house beautiful. I know it's important to study for your Sunday school class. I know it's important to uh, have the, the kids run up to the door and. and, and it's time we're here. The bus is here. I know that's all important. I, I, I know it's important to, uh, to get to class and make sure it's vacuum. Make it beautiful. I know that. I know it's important to pick up the litter on the parking lot. Boy, we have it here, don't we? This is Grand Central right here in this intersection. They just throw the cigarette butt, everything. Just, they don't care. They're, they're sinners. They're heathen. We're to make beautiful, though. We're to pick it up. God smiles when he sees that. Let me tell you the best way I believe we can make beautiful and adorn the church of our Lord. He started, by the way. <laughs> he organized it. He instituted it. The best way is to fill it up. He said, go in the highways and the hedges and compel those to come into my house that it may be half full. Is that what it said? Look it up sometime. Luke 14. I think you'll find it in verse 23. He says, not half full. He wants his church full. That's what adorns his church. Can you imagine what a testimony? All those heathen out there, they're just cutting the grass, they're raking the leaves, they're cutting trees today. But as they go to Home Depot, on their way to get a new blade for their, uh, what do they call these, chainsaws? On their way through here, they look over here, and it looks like there's a thousand people sitting in this corner. It could be if we adorned the doctrine. If we thought about it as holy and as high and as lifted up as God does. He gave himself for the church. He bought it and he purchased us with his blood. Amen. I look forward to going to church. I look forward to seeing you dear people. I look forward to praying for you. I look forward to shaking your hand. Amen. I, I'm approachable. I, I hadn't caught the germ yet. You, you don't have to look at me like that. I, I look forward to uh, help to groom the grounds when we have a work day. I love that. I, I just love being a part of a, just a small part of what Jesus started 2,000 years. We're a part of what Jesus started. Has that dawned on you? It humbles me to know we're a part of what Jesus started. Uh, uh, but you know what, if we're not apart, you know what it's like? You, you know what it's like when we don't get here early and, and shake a few hands and, and it, it at least be a part of his church and, and, and it just, you know, halfway act like we're enjoying this place? You know what it's like? It's, it's not adorning. It's like sack of trash out in the audience that stinks the high heavens. When you have a bad attitude, I don't want to be here, but my mom and my daddy made me. I could be watching Walt Disney tonight. That's what I used to say when I was these kids' age. I'm thankful something stuck along the way. And I might have looked like I was sitting out there and nothing, and nothing was catching. I'll tell you, some of it hit right here. G.S. <laughs> Crane was putting it out, and some of it hit right there. Amen? My saying tonight, listen, I, I, I'm just saying tonight, listen, oh, think about it now, church. Uh, we can make this church what we want it to be with the help and the grace of God. But we've got to make much of Jesus. We've got to make much of his church. We've got to love it. And notice verse 13. Did I say I was going to close with that verse a while ago? I did. Looking that for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm saying when he comes, uh, we ought to be performing the doing of this verses that we learned tonight. Uh, it's a glorious church, is it not? Uh, 
And we should be adorning our relationship with one another and with God in such a way that he just ushers us on in to the kingdom. Enter thou into the joy of thy salvation. Woo! Won't it be wonderful? I mean, it's a, I don't want him to catch me in vices and, and things I shouldn't be doing. I don't want him catching me living for the devil. I don't want him catching me being tempted with all these things the scripture says that we should deny ungodliness and worldly love. I don't want him to catch me like that when he comes in the clouds of glory. We're to be looking for him. I said we're to be looking for him. Oh yeah, we ought to be looking every day. Hey Christian, have you lost your victory? Have you lost your way? You forgot, didn't you? Jesus is going to come catch us in this mess one of these days. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm so afraid. Christendom has a hold and night's fast asleep, but God gave us a little wake-up call this week. I think Christians are more awake now than what you may think. And it's catching. Amen. I believe there's a chance. There's a slight chance we could have revival. God is working it, and listen, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Don't you think God cannot start the fire burning in our soul and in our churches again? The faith is the victory. The faith that we share with Christ, it's His faith. It is the victory that overcomes the world. I don't care what's coming our way. I could care less what's going on in Washington, D.C. There are a bunch of losers up there. I don't trust none of them. But I know one thing, I trust God. He said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. That's what he said. And you know, in the original language, it says this. I will never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, and just keeps on going infinitum. Leave thee nor forsake thee. In the English, we just say, I will never leave thee. No, that's not what God says. God said in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5, he said, you don't have to worry. I got it. I, I can handle this. I've seen the devil before working. He said, when you need me, I will never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, never leave you. Isn't that good? Anybody about to freeze to death in here? I feel like I'm in a meat cooler. Christian adorn the doctrine of God. Don't just study it. Clothe yourself in it. These are the righteous robes uh, that one day we'll wear, I believe. Live it. Don't just... Be all, all blow and no go. Don't just say you're a Christian. Be a Christian. You know what? If you're just saying, just to pass the time, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. I know a few verses. Jesus wept. I know a verse. John 13, 35. I know that verse. I've got that verse memorized. John 13, 35. Jesus wept. Hey, if you just know a few verses and a few cliches that you you heard your preacher say and you you quote them a few times, listen, you're just blowing smoke. You're just blowing smoke. Nobody's impressed. God's not impressed. Listen, we don't need any more fakers. That's obvious in the world today. And the same holds true for the spiritual side as much as the political arena. Listen, all we're doing when we're faking it's just dumping out our old ungodly trash in the church every time we come. We're stinking it up to high ovens. I don't like that. God don't like you don't like it. You know you don't. We need to beautify. I said we need to make it beautiful. We need to soak ourselves with perfume. Amen. Not literally, but with the word. A sweet smelling savor unto our Lord. Christians, are you living it here in this room? Are you living it? Do you love the Lord our God? In verse number 15 it says, let no man despise thee. You know, if you're really living it, they can hate you all if they want to. But this one thing they can't say about you that you didn't love the Lord. Don't you lower yourself to their level and say, you know, retaliate evil. For, don't you do it. You don't have to do that. You know, anybody can float downstream. Anybody can give their flesh to the devil. Say, devil, use me. I'm your instrument today. Go ahead and use me. Is that how we get up, really? No. It's more subtle than that, isn't it? He comes sneaking around towards us. And it takes a real man or woman of God to live for Christ. Is that why we're so behind in America today? Because it takes real men. 
If you'd have heard those men praying to God, say, Preacher, what happened to you tonight? It was those men in the prayer room praying for me. It was those men. It didn't have nothing to do with me. It was those men and God. We need you up here at church. We need you. We need you. We need you to adorn the doctrine of our God. Let us pray. Father in heaven.